So the basic idea is that we're going to solve the um, equations that uh, we derive for the pendulum uh, using a numerical uh, integration scheme and uh, we refer to that as a system simulation for that ODE, right? So, so think about the simplest type of dynamic system we might have, just a first order ODE in general takes that form, right? It's a rate of change of the state variable x uh, as a function, I mean with respect to time, as a function of the state itself and the inputs and time. So the right hand side is is the is what you derive when you do your modeling, right? And that's something that you're learning how to do in dynamic systems class. And these are the equations that I'll show you shortly that 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 you can um, also formulate from the model of the pendulum that we've already derived uh, in second order form. Uh, so the numerical integration scheme, uh, given the initial time and the value of the state or states at the time, you can then step right in time uh, every delta t seconds, say, and approximate the state at future times. And this is something that you may have been introduced to in your uh, numerical methods or computational methods class. So um, the simplest type, simplest way to do this is for this first order form is using an ODE solver. What is an ODE solver? Well, it approximates at each discrete time the value of the state at a future time given the initial value of the state by finding this change in the state. And the way we find that change in the state is what a solver does. And it estimates this delta x at the initial value. And uh, an order method is a, basically a linear approximation or a Taylor series approximation about that initial time. So if you know the initial value at some time, it you just find an extension using a, a, a linear approximation from that dynamic equations that you derive. So the right hand side of your dx dt is in fact the slope of that line, right? So if you just plug in the values, numerically get a number for the slope, multiply it by delta t, you get that little delta that you want. And that's what's described right there, right? Is that the delta x is just the value of the right hand side times delta t simplest approximation we can make. And there's error there, right? The, the Euler approximation gets better as the delta t gets smaller and smaller. If you can get really small delta times, you get more and more accurate, or you get closer to the true trajectory, right? Otherwise, you get this error. So whenever you're selecting a solver, you know, you could try using an Euler method. You do need a very small times in order to get accurate and stable solutions. If you get really, start taking really large time steps with an Euler integrator, sometimes their solutions can explode and you can experiment with that in, in your simulations. Uh, the order method is a first order run to cut method and as you add orders or you go up to fourth order which is an RK4, a method that you should have been introduced to that gives you a better approximation. In fact with an RK4 you can take larger time steps and still have a stable accurate solution and in fact most sophisticated algorithms might even use variable time step using maybe a run to cut of four to predict where it should go, then make corrections to uh, the solution uh, to reduce error and so on. So many software programs nowadays like LabVIEW, the control and simulation module which we'll use, and, and also the MATLAB programs that you might have learned to use also, those are built-in solvers. You don't have to write your own code, but you do have to put the equations in the proper form, right? And that proper form uh, for the order solver is in that first order form. So uh, once you have that formulation, in this case showing again that you've got the system equations and say maybe, maybe you're going to have more than one state, right? So this is a vector form. This says all the derivatives of the states are functions of vector of functions. And these, this is what you derive right in your modeling exercise. So when you write the equations in this form, you can then put them into the solver. But in some cases you may not have it in this form. So I'm going to show you an example which is the pendulum, right? In the pendulum, you're going to start off with an nth order equation, and you want to convert that into two first order equations, two, well, n, it depends on the order of your system. In this case, it's second order, so we're going to get, define two new state variables. In this case, the first one will be theta itself. You start off with the lowest order, and then you keep taking derivatives until you, uh, until the, the as high as the 
order of the system. In this case, it's just two, so the second one is just the second variable you define of interest is the velocity. Now you just write new state equations, derivatives of those states. So x dot 1 is just theta dot. The theta dot we defined as x2, the new state. So here's checked is the first uh, new state equation. Second one is just x double dot, which we find from the original equation. That's the, the highest uh, derivative that we can find. And then we just make substitutions, and you come up with your second equation here, right? I'm going to ask you uh, for the lab, of course, to convert this to uh, an equation for the pendulum. As I've already shown, this uh, just means changing the inertial properties. But also you're going to add other terms here because you're going to add models for the friction. So this second equation, expect this one to have additional terms that depend on the velocity, or, or x2. So right now it only depends on x1 on the right-hand side. These two state equations look very similar to the ones you're actually going to use. But we'll use, in a related uh, video, I'll show you how to... Uh, build a simulation of the simple pendulum model and you'll extend that to the compound pendulum when you do for your uh, lab work. Um, again, just emphasizing that we put these equations in state space form. The vector of state derivatives is equal to a, f a vector of equations, right? And these are in general nonlinear state equations, but they could be linear equations. You can solve linear and nonlinear equations using the solvers that we're going to be talking about. Note these equations are also coupled, which is why they're difficult to solve. For example, x dot 2 is related to x1, and x1 is related to x2. They're coupled, so they have to be solved together. And that's what these solvers can do for you, is, you, uh, is they can solve all of these equations for the states, for the x1 and the x2, not for the derivatives. You're solving for the x1 and x2 uh, all simultaneously. Right? Finally, sometimes you uh, like to write these in uh, text-based code, and you may have learned how to use MATLAB, for example, and the ODE solvers to uh, solve systems of ordinary differential equations like this. And so you, for the pendulum, the equations might look in script form this way. Both MATLAB and LAB, you have script-type environments where you can use um, uh, M files and call built-in routines for solving differential equations this way. Um, even though I'm going to show you how to use LabVIEW and a block diagram environment for describing your system equations, I'm still going to show you how to include a text description of the actual system equations. That's my personal preference. It just makes it easier. There's no sense in recasting this in a block diagram form if you don't have to. Easier to debug and so on. You can certainly make this into a block diagram form as I'll, I'll show you, but uh, I like to keep that in text-based form.